What's up? I'm Matt. I'm Paulo. We're from Trivium. And you're watching the Kerrang! Podcast. Woo! Well, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce you uh, to Matt and Paolo from Trivium. Woo! How are you doing today? Doing well, man. How are you? I'm very good. Very good. Excellent. And sorry about the tardiness. Our bus driver uh, was a little late today, so it's a little domino course, but... Rock and roll, right? We've uh, dispatched a work experience kid with a baseball bat to uh, have a word. Not really. I hope that'd be weird if something did actually happen. He has, be... he, has a, he has a baton, though, so your guy better be pretty yeah, good. Yeah, he beat someone up at the beginning, I think. Like, we were, like, hitting on the bus or something the night before, and he crept up behind him and gave him a little whack on the, the leg. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. So how's life on the bus? I mean, what, what do you do at nights after the show? Uh, the thing with... All right, let me do the big comparison between... North America and Europe for, for touring. The buses in North America are always awesome. The dressing rooms, even in some of the nicest places in the US, don't have backstage toilets sometimes, don't have showers, you have to buy a hotel. When it comes down to European buses, European buses, even if you get a great one, it's usually kind of shot, like they'll put the bathroom in the middle of the bunk area, or you'll have a heating rod like in Nick's bunk and it'll burn your skin every time you roll over. But even in some of the crappiest venues, they always have really nice showers and nice bathrooms. So that's the trade-off. So when it comes time for the bus, we're pretty much in there to sleep. They, they both smell bad though, like yes. regardless of like any tour, or any place you're at, like if you got 12 dudes on a bus, you can just imagine what that and, would smell the like. bus speakers, I heard them for the first time last night. It sounds like uh, a Windows 98 desktop. They're just asleep in though. It's like, yeah, I don't spend too much it. time on those things. So. Yeah. <laughs> So there's obviously the rule about uh, no twosies on the bus. Um, twosies, what's that? Uh, really number two. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're not allowed to do that. Well, technically you can. You just have. You'd have to pay for it because uh, they got to use chemicals and like five cents a log or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds delightful. Um, so the, this tour is uh, the first time UK fans have seen your new drummer Nick, who plays Travis. Yep. Um, how are the fans taking to him? Everyone. And what's he brought to the table? Well, uh, everyone's been welcoming him like with open arms, and uh, he's awesome. He's an awesome dude. He's really funny, and uh, just good having like a dude I've known that long. I've known him since I was six years old, and we started playing music together. So to bring a longtime friend into the band, it's just been great. And what are we chopped bring... liver? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. oh, man. <laughs> No, nah, no. Nah. We I'm need a new blood, so. Yes. No, he's, he's amazing. He's, he's absolutely amazing. Um, you know, basically, there were a lot of questions, and we've been kind of staggering the information as we've been going, but, you know, everyone was curious on what happened, why it happened. Basically, Travis had to sit out the first, we had two North American headlining tours. He had to sit out the first one, and um, due to personal reasons. And basically, we were incredibly lucky that Paulo knew someone that was able to fill in that could learn our entire set in a week and come in and fill in this tour because basically if we didn't have Nick we would have had to cancel that entire tour because we wouldn't have been able to afford a session drummer you know and then um, if the issues weren't resolved by that point we wouldn't be here right now even we would have had to cancel the rest of the stuff because we wouldn't have had a drummer um, so thankfully Nick came in learned the entire set and it was really by the first practice we knew he was the guy for the band um, we knew before anything was even confirmed and um, we were over in Canada and we realized it was time to make everything official. We wanted Nick to be officially in the band and we had to let Travis go. So um, flying home on a show day in Montreal wasn't really an, issue, like an option to fly from Montreal to Orlando. So we had to do it, um, do it over the phone we've and stuff. We've done most of all, we've done so many like Personal. of our decisions, like we have to do it like that because we're always constantly moving. We just don't, we don't have the time at home. And it was like, no, no matter what, there was no pleasant way around like the decision and stuff and we didn't take it really lightly at all but we gave ourselves two three weeks into the tour to kind of make that decision and make like sure. yeah and, and like he like he said like you know we knew Nick as a player instantly was definitely capable of being our drummer but uh you know you got to make sure someone fits in because you know he had toured with us over the summer as Travis's drum tech but it's different when you're playing in a band with someone there's a lot of stuff that goes into it and you know, if someone doesn't click right away, it's like it might never work. So we had to give ourselves that little buffer time to so know he was right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, legally we had to have all parties present, all four of the band members and all of our management at the same time. So it had to be done that way. And uh, yeah, thank God for Nick. Because I mean, like I said, we would have had to cancel some tours for sure. And um, basically our creativity was dwindling a little bit. And uh, our live show, I felt, wasn't as good as it should have been anymore. And uh, nowadays, it's, I can confidently say we are better now than we've ever been live, without a doubt. I've never and seen like, everyone smiling as much on stage yeah, since no like, we started touring. There's no stress, never anything wrong. 
I mean, God, yesterday I had maybe 10 technical things go wrong on my end. I was still laughing about it at the end. Right. You know. <laughs> Could those kind of things yeah, just, just completely destroy a show? Once you're, having fun, once you're having fun again on tour, it's like everything else is just like, eh, it happens. Mm -hmm. yeah, so but we're enjoying ourselves now. It was hard, but we absolutely wish him nothing but the best in the world. Yeah. And I think that whether realizing now or five years from now or a month from now, I think it's better for him health-wise, mental-wise, everything to be stepped out, to be doing his own thing. Yeah. So I think it's for the best of all five of us. Right, right. Um, you can see Nick's stick work on uh, the video for Shot in the Skies mm -hmm. Above, um, <coughs> sort of recorded in the house. Uh, is it where you're going to be recording the album? No, or was that, was done, that was done in my loft where I live. Right. So The only stuff that was done in an actual studio was the drums. Um, we haven't totally, uh, totally planned out where we're recording yet, but it's going to be in Orlando. Hopefully we just kind of have to, yeah, like we're, we're hoping we can get like some sort of house and just kind of base everything out of there. Obviously the drums would be done in like a normal studio, but that's just the way, the way forward for us. It's just more comfortable and more just makes sense. You know, when you can record on a laptop and reamp it all later, you might as well yeah. utilize that while you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Cause the Bella Tree Peppers did the Blood Sugar Sex Magic video in the house. Uh, where they kind of lived and yeah. breathed the music for two months, three months. I think months. that's the kind of vibe we want to get. Yeah. And we love, you know, being in Florida. It's like that's where we want to record. And we can we can spend so much time working on this album because, you know, we have a warehouse and we can do pre-production and do all the demos for months and months. And it's nothing for us. We can just go in. And that that's the key is we want to spend the time on this one and really make it a special album. Awesome. Um, Shot in the Skies, but it's, uh, it's a part of the soundtrack for Gods of War 3. Um, how good are the band at the, at the game? Have you played? Um, I played 1 and 2. 3 it just came out on the 16th, which might be today or yesterday. I think they're sending us copies. Right. Yes. I thought you might have had a sneaky yes, uh, preview. Or send, me the, send me the ultimate edition. Um, uh, no, the thing I'm actually playing the video, everyone was like, oh, he's lucky he gets to play God of War 3 before everyone else. That was actually the remastered number 1. Because right. they remastered 1 and 2 as like a collection package for people to catch up for the 3. And um, I can't wait to see three. I've been watching the trailers. You can like um, choke things with their own, and, like entrails and stuff, and rip people's heads off till their necks start exploding. I think we're. I think our song is absolutely perfect for the game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it sounds like a night out in Birmingham. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to be a fantastic game. Like the scale looks ridiculous. Like you can see whole worlds happening as you're playing, and it's going to be great. I'm a massive gamer fan so I'm, I'm very excited brilliant um so you've just recently uh been to jakarta uh how was how were those shows because uh that was kind nice. of starved with western we bands were hoping for 500 people and it was well over 3,000 people it, it was nuts man like they really when we rolled in got off the plane we're like we have no idea what to expect right now and from the moment we landed like we were treated m more than amazing like just they they brought us right through customs went right to the hotel and it was just the whole time was just the ultimate treatment and, and people really really love heavy music down there they need an outlet and i think uh we're definitely not going to wait a couple of years to go back we'll definitely go back on the next album yeah, I, I, we loved it there man they, they treated us like policy like, like <clears throat> ridiculous like kings over there when the nice hotel we've ever been in amazing traditional food amazing fans and people everything was amazing yeah, nice. yeah the food there was awesome that's cool um so you're gonna go in uh, at may time for the album um, so that's when we're going to probably start the pre-pro, roughly yeah. around end of April, beginning of May. And uh, we haven't set a date to track, but we're looking at around August. And hopefully if we can have it done by October, November, that would be the, the best time for us. And then start touring again in 2011. Right. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, best of luck with the new album. Thank, um, you, very much. thank you Enjoy the rest of the stay in the UK, and uh, we'll see you next year. Definitely. Awesome, man. Thank you. Cool.